Well, thanks for thanks for having us here. This is quite a privilege having walked. How long has it been? It feels like a few months, but it's, <laughs> it's been long. <laughs> I think back of the time when I first met met Jason. Do you do you remember when that was? It it, it, it was it was with uh, some other outreach with uh, with with Lighthouse where uh, we went to this facility in um, in Friedenburg, I think it was. And um, and we both happened to be there. We didn't know each other. And then Jason said, you know. So where are you going? I said, no, I'm going back. Where do you live? Durbanville. I live in Durbanville. Can I have a, can I have a, a lift with you back? Uh, and that, that, I think, turned out to be a divine appointment. Um, one thing that I should say is that I don't generally talk in a car. I was just going to say that. He hates talking in a car. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps telling the kids, be quiet. I can't concentrate. I don't know where to turn. And he came home and he told me about this guy, you know. Nice guy. <laughs> he didn't stop talking. He just, he just talked the whole time. I, uh huh, uh huh, <laughs> and he was just passionate about about um, how did he put it? He said um, the the marketplace. You know, passionate about the marketplace was the, the the term that I heard again and again and again. So a lot of passion, but um, but in fact. Like many of us, and I, I see the Simon again, still broken. That uh, and and there's 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 sometimes these these fronts that we live up to, and and uh, in society we've got all these pressures, and uh, but but yet there's there's always something that we need to sort out. And I must say that these guys have done the hard work, <laughs> and then, boy, it was it was work. Yeah, they are. So I thought that we could. Uh, just ask him a few questions about the book and those sort of things, and um, and uh, if uh, if you guys want to ask some questions as well, we we we're more than welcome to accommodate that. But why the book? <laughs> so <clears throat> the book is when when the book came to our mind. It's in fact many people ask <clears throat> if we are working with people today or couples because of the book and actually said no. It's after working with so many families, so many couples, and seeing so many things that through our story and our testimony, what we have done, the hard work, as you said, um, and we, we go deep in terms of communication, but not just with you guys, but in the, before you guys, I mean, Lighthouse and, and Peter, the pastoral team, and friends, and uh, all the, those principles that we got and implemented in our marriage, and it was working. And then when we start helping other couples, and it, the same principles that worked in our lives was working in our marriage, it start working in other families. Then we start asking a question, how can we speak to so many people those principles, and then the book came, Restoring Torn Families came to our mind to do it. Why was it important for you guys to write the book? Why did you, why, why did you start uh, writing the book? Well, like Jason said, we work with many, many couples and many families daily, and we saw the need uh, to write the book to, to reach more people, because when you see people, when, when you see you, for example, at our, at our house, we're only reaching you with these principles, so we decided we need more people to hear about this because we know what is done in our own lives. So. No, and I, and I think today I'm I'm seeing something new, you know, and that's that's. Um, I mean, we we just discuss things as friends, you know, and that's just it's what friends do, you know. You try and help each other out, but but I'm seeing a huge knock-on effect, you know. It's we didn't help you, we actually helped the whole family, and uh, Josh said. About, he, about things that he didn't even realize. And I think there's still a lot that he doesn't realize. You know, there's a knock-on effect on their family and their grandchildren and their grandchildren's children. You know, this has got generational blessings if, uh, if one just does the right thing. But um, yeah, it, it wasn't easy. Um, Jason, I remember a few cases where you, 
where you stood up and you said, this is enough, you know, I can't, I can't take this, you know, so why, why did you take it in the end, apart from my stubbornness? Your stubbornness, your persistence, I mean, I remember that, uh, oh my word. Uh, you know, especially communication. When we start with communication, with the principles, and we speak in the book, your names are here, by the way. Um, in that book. In that book. <laughs> not, not this one here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but when we start learning about communication, we just realize we did not know each other at all. When we put in practice the principles of communication, we just actually realized we don't know each other. And that was scary. And actually, I remember uh, at one stage, actually you said, guys, I just want to say this, you don't know each other. And then I said, my word, we're married for more than 12 years and we don't know each other. Not in that deep and intimacy thing, it's really, I mean, I mean you always, tend to listen, to reply. I mean, how many times Charlene was saying something and I'm already like, uh-huh, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. That's, do you know why, do you know why? <laughs> because, do you understand? So you, you, ex and she would say, excuse me, you'll never forget this. Eh? So you, I, I shared that excuse with you. A lot of fire. Uh, eh? A lot of fire. <laughs> And, and, and really, many times when, you, when, you, when, when she says something, I'm in my mind already preparing, okay, I'm going to say it's because of her family, it's because of her mom, it's because of our children, it's because of this. I, I did this because, the way you say, that's why I say I speak like this as well, that is listening to reply. Until we learn the principle of listen to understand. That changed everything. Because now the person is speaking, and already your flesh wants to you know, pop in and say, but, no, 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 no. Why is she saying this? There is a reason. They hurt in the past. I hurt her, all of that. So it's very, it's, it, it's, I, I like communication, and communication is, is one of the principles that we, we have in the book. Change our, our marriage, change our lives, and it's changed many other families as well. Well, I think one of the underlying principles that we agreed on beforehand, because, I mean, once you start delving into these problem areas, opening up the wounds and things, you, you, you have to have the, the safety of a commitment, you know, and say that, listen, we are going to hurt each other by opening up, and, and, and I am going to make myself vulnerable by by opening up myself to, to the other party who's hurt me before. Um, why, why is that so important? I mean, why, why did you agree to say, yes, we commit to this, doesn't matter what happened, doesn't matter what gets out here, we committed to the relationship? Well, first of all, we, we believe in family. We believe that God's heart is all about the family. And working with other people, you see their brokenness, but you also see God restoring their lives. And I think in a way, we were so broken, I think we were at the point where we thought um, we need to receive healing as well as we've been helping other people to get there themselves. But we needed help. And I think um, coming to you guys was exactly that. It was, it was our way of saying, we want to do this, we want to get to a place where we can think about what has happened in the past, but it's not hurting anymore. Um, so our commitment was there because of that, because we wanted to see the end result of, of and the fact that, that we knew that God could, God heals, heal other, heal other people. We wanted to see that same thing happening in our lives. Even though it's very difficult, even if you commit like we did to resolve, to learn, to grow, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I remember, for example, when you guys gave us the, and it's in the book as well, um, you, you, you guys gave us the, the, the daily topic, and we decided to do our daily topic. Okay, Monday we speak about kids, Tuesday we speak about her family, Wednesday about my family, Thursday about us, Friday we bless the kids, and, we, and, we, and Saturday and, and Sunday we're free, and then Monday again. 
And I mean, it was very, very difficult for me to start. I mean, I, don't, I did not know how to start, how to say, just to say, uh, okay, let's, let's talk about our kids today. Very, very difficult, very hard. And Charlene, of course, she started. She has to, 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 to start the thing. And, but later on, we, we saw how amazing was this. Because you started with this structure. It's almost like, ah, this is discipline. This is like, we have to do this month and Tuesday and, and Wednesday. But it's amazing because then we saw that later became so natural that we were talking about all topics of the week in one day together. So it, it but very difficult, very hard to, to really start. And by the way, Jack, the most difficult thing I think when we help couples and families and, and especially husbands, uh, not just husbands, I'm saying husbands because I speak to the husbands, it's very difficult to be real. It's very, I mean, in our case, for example, it's, I mean, it's not easy to write your story in the book and say to the world that um, you, this guy was going to leave his wife for another woman. He's leaving his kids. It's not easy. Even now, it's not easy at all. Uh, but when you are healed, becomes easier. And when you realize that your story is impacting and changing lives, then you see it's worth it. Because many people say, this is not worth it. How can you expose yourself? Why don't you just be restored and that's okay? I said, now, our intention is to share our story for many couples not to do what we did. And for those that did or are doing, they stop. And just to say there is a way uh, uh, to es escape, God can restore you. But, but yeah, it's, it's worth it to I do it. I remember with the daily topic, Trasan struggled a lot initially. And I was um, starting you know, these convers daily conversations with him every day. And there came a point where I felt, why do I have to take responsibility for this? Why can't you do it as well? And I think Jason being a person, I, I don't know if, if men are like that generally, um, but I found that Jason had, was struggling to stop to initiate uh, uh, the chats daily. And I had to grow a thick skin. I had to decide whether I'm going to push for him to do this, to start this daily, or if, I'm, if, if we're going to benefit from this thing uh, uh, through me starting it. So I decided whether you want to or not, we're going to have these chats whether it's you initiating or whether it's me. And I think that really helped. And I think a lot of women often feel that no, but my, my husband has to, to, to show initiative as well. But if, he's, if he can't get to that place, then you need to step up and you need to do it. Yeah, I remember that um, one of the aspects in Jarson you mentioned it earlier is to, um, to start listening to understand. <laughs> and I always wondered how you experienced that um, and when we gave Charlene the, uh, the wooden spoon, <laughs> how, uh, how did you guys... Uh... Talk about the wooden spoon. They would just... Stop, 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 time out, stop. Everybody quiet. If you've got the spoon, you may talk. If you do not have the spoon, you need to be quiet. <laughs> so they were passing the spoon to <laughs> the And then... So say, no, you don't have the spoon. Be quiet. She's talking now. Yeah, and I think that then you can hand over... What we said is you can hand over the spoon once you felt that the person has understood. So you keep on saying the same thing, and when they, when they get it, finally get it, and... Sherson, you took a time <laughs> to get it, um, but but you got it, you got it, and 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 I mean it's not just you not getting it. It's it's a, I mean communication sending and receiving, and and Charlene was telling you something in a certain way that that you wouldn't understand, you know, and and so both of you. So so how did you experience that? I think I think. It only becomes difficult because b b both wants to be right. I am right. This is how I see it. You don't understand me. Uh, this, is, this is how we should be doing and whatever. And you are speaking Russian and the person is understand French. And how bad was the communication? 
So for me, the difficult part with that to listen, to understand, is when you say, okay, even though I think it's true for me, it's real for me, this is not a big thing, because we have, we always say this, but this is not a big thing, why, why are you saying this? This is so small, you know, that kind of stuff, but not for her. For the other person, this is real, this is a hurt, this is a feeling. And when we discover that, wow, now I got it. It's all about, it doesn't matter if that feeling is, it sounds stupid for me, it sounds small or insignificant, but not for the other person. And when you start doing that, then we, we try to, we, 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 we manage. And I think it's moving towards that, it's not that I am right and you are wrong, but it's that we are both right. But I want to understand your position of being right. You know, both, both are right. Both rights with our feeling. This is my feeling. Yeah. Leave my feeling. Okay. <laughs> Shalene, what was most difficult for you? I think digging up all the old wounds. Um, when, when everything happened in 2011, I think we went through a phase where we just needed to, to let everything calm down. And that happened for about a year. And then when we eventually got to you guys, um, we, were, we were ready for this, you know? And, um, and so, yeah, it was, it, it, it was, it was extremely difficult to, to just open up all these things and all the misunderstandings and all everything that, 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 that's happened. Um, so it was, it was extremely difficult, especially when Jason wanted to walk out, when he felt like, I've had enough, I can't do this. You know, I wanted to see commitment. And, um, and so those moments were, 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 were difficult because you kind of feel like you're giving up on this. You know, we're in this to, to make this happen, to make this work. Um, and you guys were really used by God because you brought us right back to where we needed to be and we could, we could walk that road of person. Jack just ignored him. Exactly. You know, Jack would get up and Jack would just like, I asked you, how does it make you feel? I can't do this anymore. Dude. How does it make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, Joseph would just turn around and sit back and go, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, re I remember, I remember when, one day when I stood up and I said, Jack, we are friends. You're really my friend. But really, it's too much. And really, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I sit down and this guy starts asking me questions as if I did not say that I don't want to do it. <laughs> and, 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 and he said, OK, so next Tuesday? No, when is it? Next Wednesday? I said, yes, next Wednesday we'll be here. So it was like, I mean, for six, I remember. I mean, we, we had other time together till today. But six months, every Wednesday together, it was tough, but we can see the fruits today, the results, not, in, not in just in our lives, but in other, in other families, in other couples as well. Um, yeah, it's, it, it was great. <laughs> and I think even, and, and I mean, you might, you might attest to this as well, but Yvette and I was also talking about it, that as we are discussing things, <coughs> the examples we used um, are examples from our life and, and we actually resolved things while we were talking to you guys. We had to face our own issues. And, and many times when you left, we were like, what did you mean when you say that? You know, and it's like, <laughs> and so, we need to talk. We need to talk. You did not back me. <laughs> um, but, but I must say, many, many times we were lying there and we were just saying, I don't know. What are we going to do? Um, the one or the other just doesn't get it, and it, and it will actually shift. You know, I, Charlene, I remember there were times when you stood up and you said, I can't do this anymore. So, I mean, what are those, those sacrifices that you need to make? I mean, what, what did you need to sacrifice to, to, get, this, to get to this place? Um, your own ideas, your own way of seeing things, and really, like Jason said, uh, said earlier, that we didn't know each other, and that to me was a big shock because we communicate a lot, we speak a lot, but um, I realized that we speak a lot about ministry, we speak a lot about our work, but not about our own lives and... Um, Dreams and... Yeah, and so that was, yeah, that was, that was difficult. 
Yeah. You, Jason? No, definitely. I think I agree with Shalene. Um, we always connect it when it's about business, when it's about ministry, any other thing. But the husband and wife, the, the, the father and mother, the, the relationship, the feelings, um, we really realized that we did not have that at all. And the, the, the worst with that is this, that when it happens with husband and wife, um, father and mother, it flows into your kids' lives. If there is no connectivity, if there is no intimacy, if there is no realness, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen the same with your kids. I saw, and, and we speak about in the book, where um, our kids, there was a time in our home that there was completed, completely isolation. Joshua in that room, Jesse there, I was in the corner, Shalene there, and until we, we started doing the communication, and that thing changed in our communication, it changed here, but then it starts flowing into the kids as well, and then the communication was better in our home. And for me, it's worth it. For me, it's worth it because what you guys have done for us, not, I, I mean, one of the principles that we have in this book is the benefits of being connected. And those six months was really being connecting connected with, with people that have godly counsel to give us. Um, I mean, many couples come into our home for counseling, and they will, they will always say, my mother said I must leave him, my teacher, my friend, my whoever. So it's, we must be very careful with who we connect to, to share our struggles, and, and, and praise God that we have you guys. And we speak about this, the importance. I mean, it started even with, with the church lighthouse where the, the senior pastor, Peter Sneiman, the pastor team, they were coming into my house and visiting us and trying to get and say, listen, what's, what's going on? What is happening? Other friends, people phoning from Europe, Brazil, Africa, friends. And so it's important when you have, I always say, it's good for a man to have at least two. If you can have three, it's good. It's awesome. But at least two friends where you can go and share your heart. You don't need to, a problem doesn't need to come to your home first for you to go. You can actually go before it, you open the door. And I think you guys had actually uh, an advantage above other couples today because, I mean, you were working in the same ministry to the, the standard today is that you've got husband and wife even working in different ministries, so there's even no connecting point there. Um, and I think to take it just one step further, um, we actually disconnected from God as well. You know, we think we know Him, etc. Et but it's not, it's not about the words. It's not about what you say. And, and, and you know, you said we, we talk a lot, but we don't communicate. You know, so that communication, I think, is is lacking. And um, I mean, the whole, um, I never knew you. Yeah, I mean, you all know that, that, that verse in the Bible, you know. Um, I think that's real. We don't know each other and we don't know God and he doesn't, he doesn't know us. Um, so how do we make this thing practical um, in, in terms of a book, because now you don't have somebody that you can go and connect to, you connect it to a book. So is there practical things in, in, in how people could address this thing in their lives? We, we actually, in, in the book actually, we, we, we try to be very practical. Even we give a lot of steps where people can do it. Even, I, I mean, we have, we have a couple here, we have many couples here, but that actually, they heard I speaking once. They heard I speaking once about blessing the children. Or, or, and late, a year later, you meet this couple and this, the husband come and say, listen, I am doing this. I have been doing this for a year. I said, really, where did you get this from? No, from you when I heard you last year. I said, really, you feel so, wow, it's worth it. It's worth it to, to teach those things. So it's so practical. In fact, we, we, in the introduction of this book, we say, when you finish this book, you're going to say, this is the easiest book I have read in my entire life. And many people are saying, I mean, we heard guys that read this book 
in, in, in one day. Um, <laughs> but he did not beat uh, 82 years old that read this book in four hours. He could not stop reading the book. Um, so we, gi we, we give practical, practical steps. In fact, Jack, we say this. It's not about information. People have information. They go to universities. They go to church every Sunday morning. They go to cell groups and wo workshops and seminars. We have so many info. And it's amazing. A scripture that comes to my mind from the word of God that God said, I'm not interested in hearers, but doers. People that do. In other words, I can know about something. But the thing is, do I do that? And when I love that, it's easy for people to follow you and start doing it because you are loving. And you said something that's interesting. And Charlene always say, if we don't love each other, it's because you're not loving God. If we don't respect each other, it's because we are not respecting God. Really, our relationship with our spouses and children and friends, it will be, it will define by the kind of relationship you have with God. That's a fact. If you love God, if you connect to God, your relationship, even, even for example, when I'm connected to God, I'm praying, I'm reading the word of God, I'm in tune with him. If someone hurts me, for God so loved the world, love your enemies, because you're connected to him. If God's <laughs> going to say, hey, don't do this. But if you're not, if, I mean, it happened to me, I mean, on the N1, I mean, a few years ago, uh, this guy did something, I just accelerated, I want I wanna him, I just wanted to see him. And she's saying, what are, you, what are you doing? This is flesh. And I said, yeah, this is true. God will never do that. So, so these are the kind of things that when you are connected to God, it flows, uh, uh, the connection flows in your house as well. Oh, yeah. So are you ready to be vulnerable again? Can we ask people to ask you some questions and uh, that we get some honest answers, maybe from the children? Jess, Josh, have you, have you had questions? Because, I mean, we, you never came with when we had this. I mean, any questions from your guys' side? Um, <coughs> there were a lot of questions, but I think after reading the book, a lot of them were, were answered. And I think so, um, no, I don't, I don't think that's... Your question's been answered. Anybody else with questions? If, if, I, if I may, not specifically uh, to anybody, but uh, just generally to the floor. <coughs> I think uh, uh, Sean, you mentioned uh, something related to Jack about uh, friendship and, and having to deal with issues and some Yourself to, to someone else, which I personally, and I think Shalini would also say that as, as men, we often probably find ourselves to be, you know, we need to be the strong person and we tend not to show <coughs> the soft side or as opposed to the feelings as what's well called kind. And, and I find it extremely difficult uh, opening up, especially if I've got my, my brother, my rugby buddy, my Tommy, you know, we have been soccer guys, we sports. To differentiate that from, from friendship into buddy, you're going wrong, or buddy tells me I'm going wrong, and it's like, whoa, where are you coming from? This, what am I seeing? So, just, just you, you mentioned that you guys have gone through that sort of transition period, and I just want to um, you know, maybe just to enlighten me, you know, or just a form of advice. How does, how does one sometimes? see that it's a problem, having to address it, not having the concern about may I lose this as a friendship and not wanting to impose what that's and, and I think I think I think this is a very important question because this is I mean you, you generalize appropriately because this is a this is a problem for men. It used to be a problem for me as well and I think uh, it's it's quite clear that, that Gerson also went through through some uh, some process to to get through this um, I think that the first step is to acknowledge that that this is a problem 
uh, for me, it came when um, when we went on. I mean, we were married for three weeks when we were went on our first marriage enrichment uh, weekend. You know, and we had all these other people that struggled with their marriages, and we like. Mm. We've been married for three weeks. We don't have any problems. Uh, and that evening was the biggest fight we ever had in our marriage. Uh, that very evening. And we were married for three day, uh, three weeks. And, um, and, and in the end, what, what, what the, the teacher said there um, that really struck me was um, what the levels of communication are. You know, so for me, um, with a lot of figures behind the names and science, and you know, I'm a scientist, so facts is the ultimate. If you can put down a fact, it closes the deal. Those are the facts. And he just asked me one question. He says, so how does that make you feel? And how does that make your wife feel? And I had to acknowledge that even though I'm right, so I won the argument, if she's not happy that I've won, then I've lost. And there's a recent teacher that even said it better for me, and he says, to win an argument is the booby prize of life. And it truly is. If you can get to an understanding where the facts doesn't matter, and I think that was one thing, Jason, where he says, but this is not true. And I said, it doesn't matter whether it's true. It's true for her. I mean, how many times? I mean, that, that's probably the six months there. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, it's, it's, the feeling part is difficult. Yeah, and you hear what I'm saying is, is we try and focus on the facts, and that's, that's, I think, where men are. We try and focus on the facts. Women are generally more in tune with their emotions and their feelings, etc. And if you can get in touch with your own emotions, it's truly a deeper level of engagement um, because, I mean, facts and those things are not even mentioned as one of the everlasting things. You know, the one that's going to last forever is love. And love has got no facts. <laughs> and, and that's truly where you want to move towards is can you get to that love that is beyond yourself so much so that you're even willing to sacrifice your facts and your self for the sake of the other. And we actually saw that happening. And the last person to do that was actually Charlene. And it's when she gave up what she was clinging on to when the breakthrough came and everything changed. And, and it, 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 you can actually see it happening in a person. And her words were, OK, I'll be vulnerable. I'll give you another chance. That was her words. And, and, and that must have been very difficult. But I think that's, that's where we need to get to. And once you realize that and you move beyond the facts, <clears throat> because what happened has happened. You know, you can't change that. How does that make you feel? Just if you hear that word again, you're going to run. If I say, how does that make you feel? Now, now we ask this question often to couples. How do you feel? <laughs> it's a nice torture. Yeah. But you mentioned something about friendship in terms of open as well with someone. Um, it's very, it's, 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 how can I say, you have all kinds of friends, but there are many friends that they are not the kind of friends for you to open your life. For many reasons, this happened to me when we struggled. Others will even say, I think you should get divorced. I think God doesn't hate divorce like people say. I think you really should leave your home. And I'm talking about Christians. So, and there are friends, or friends that will listen to you and will hurt the other. And you need to find people that they're not going to be nice friends, but good friends. Good, I mean, nice friends, they want to say, no, it's fine, man, you can make those mistakes again. That's all right. That's nice friends. Good friends will say, you're wrong. I cannot back you. And I heard this for some friends. And when I went to them, for example, we found that kind of friendship. That there wasn't side. They did not take side. And in fact, when I felt they were hurting me badly, 
And when they start like, in my opinion, hurting Charlene, I was like, that's good, that's, you see, you see. <laughs> Someone understands me. But then I realized that no, they, they are not working towards me or her. They are working towards our relationship. So that's the kind of friends that you need to, to get. And, it, and, it, and it's funny, that kind of friend actually should not take your side, but should show you that you need to sacrifice yourself. And when you get there, you know, and I've got very, very few such friends that will say, well, what I think you should do in this situation is, and then it, it's, it's counterintuitive. And when they say it, you, you just go against it. Think about it for a while and you find out that you know, they're actually right. You know, because, because it is about self-sacrifice. And what you realize is once you've sacrificed yourself, you gain everything. Um, and I think that's, that's your experience and, as well. And, yeah. and I think even before looking for people, um, there, there is one part of, actually I, I mentioned what led me for that behavior. There were many things, but there, there wasn't a specific thing. And, and we were spe actually we were talking about this in the car today, in this, in, in this morning, that the very first thing people need to do is to realize they have to deal with their pain. They have to deal with something that is out there that happened in the childhood, that happened a few years ago, a hurt, something that I don't want to touch, I don't want to talk about it. This is painful, I cannot do this. This is so, I can't, it's intense, it's emotional. And I'm, I always say this, if you don't deal with this thing now, this thing is going to get you in future. And it's going to hurt. And if you look at the history, and if you look at people that fall, and I'm not saying just adultery. I'm talking about gambling. I'm talking about anger. I'm talking about anything. If, if, you, if you don't deal, if you talk to those people, there were things there. So, for example, when a husband, I never did this, praise God, but if a husband hit the wife, and break something in the nose or whatever. That incident, that, it, it, the, the, how can I say, it happened there. The, 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 the action was there, but he broke her nose a few years back. But he did not deal with those things there before. So there are many people, there are, I mean, thousands, millions of people that they are carrying their lives with so many things inside to deal with. And if they don't do it, those, those thing, that thing one day is going to explode somehow. But, I mean, this is, this is true for any family. And I think most families, um, in, in just everyday talking to people, most families have got one or other issue. And children grow up in those families, and those children get married, and they bring those hurts and things into a marriage. So I think everybody has got things to deal with, and it's can you understand the other person? Can you communicate and try and find out what it is? Because it's truly rare to find people who come from healthy families. And, and, and that impacts on society and, and, and all of that. So. That's all my questions. Do you have any other questions that you would like to? Uh... I have some tag me in this. I should go through. The first one on the list was, what was it you said last time? Like, I'm a nice guy. Tell them I'm a nice guy. You were a nice guy. <laughs> you were an awesome guy. We love you. I just want to hear if you think that any family can be responsible. Absolutely. Um, like I said, we've seen so many people being restored and many of these couples come to us and they, they, they arrive at our house at a state of total despair. The husband is leaving, the wife, vice versa. And the first, the initial feeling is how do you handle this, how do you do this? Like, first of all, um, 
we tell them it's God that does it. So God will restore. Um, so yes, uh, uh, um, absolutely. You, you, it's, it's a matter of really, really trusting God in the people's lives and taking them through that process. So any family who's open and who's willing and who's committed to that process can be restored. With any problem, with any situation, I really believe God can restore. And I think God is just waiting on the other side. Do you want? Um, coming back to, okay, I want to deal with this. I'm going to open up, I'm going to deal, and I want to be restored. And for any problem, gambling, pornography, anything, anyone can be restored. Because you get to a point where you feel I like that, and, and we felt like that. We can't do this. It's not a great feeling. It's not nice to open up uh, all these things. But you need to really push through at, at, at the times and, and the days and the moments where you feel like I've had enough. Um, it's better to just uh, forget about all these things and not deal with it. Pretend they're not there. Um, that you need to actually force yourself and. Speaking about accountability and having people around you, if you have people around you that can, can, can tell you, continue on this, in this process, yeah. that is an amazing thing. That is something that you will see yeah. and you will reap the benefits of that. Okay. And, and I just want to say this about restoration. When, when restoration means to give back, to bring back to the original form. Uh, in other words, if you, if you have an accident, you take to the penobita, he's going to, paint is going to change everything and if you, you show your car and say oh, I just had an accident look at the picture and now you look at the car so they brought they restored the car but the amazing thing is when God restores is different when men restore it just bring back to the original form when God restores he adds you can see throughout the, throughout the Bible the Word of God Job, he lost family, he lost everything. And the Bible said that God restored, but he added more. And I can see this in my family. God restored our marriage, but he's restored, he added so many great things that, it's, that is happening in uh, the dynamic in our house. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for your willingness to, uh, to do this. I think the book is great. And that um, we pray that it impacts a lot of other lives as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks,